Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where the magic is definitely in the air today and that's because I'm working on the final sound effects for the Gruesome Gulch layout and along with that we're going to be building the spectacular grand finale, the Haunted Hoedown over in Cadaver Caverns. There's a lot to do and I've got a lot to show you so let's get started. This little six foot long layout is actually going to have two complete sound systems. One on the front side where the ghost town is and a second complete independent soundtrack over in Cadaver Caverns. I need to say a huge thank you to Jim Wells of Fantasonics Engineering. Jim has been working with me behind the scenes for several months now to come up with a wonderful a pair of soundtracks for the layout and I can't thank him enough. Uh, Jim is a professional sound engineer who specializes in scale sound, miniaturized sound for our model train layouts. You really need to check out his stuff over at uh, Fanasonics Engineering and I'll put a link down below. I know some of you have been wondering what this big uh, cutout in the front of the layout is for. And, you know, for, for one thing, it's access for the wiring and the track and everything that runs through here. Uh, but the other thing it's for is for the front side sound system, which I just got finished installing. Uh, let me just walk you through the different components here. First of all, we've got a Prycom Dream Player Lite right there, which plays WAV files on a micro SD card. And this is the amp over here, the Dream Amp, also from Prycom. And then we have a pair of Tang Band speakers on the right and the left. So it's beautiful stereo sound. Uh, there's, a, there's a volume control. And this is a complete looping soundtrack, and it's randomized. There's, there's six minute long clips that play uh, in random, truly random order. So you can listen to this all day and <laughs> hardly hear the same thing twice. It's just fantastic. I've had a lot of fun playing with it this morning and uh, really happy to get that installed. This is going to be covered by a grill, basically kind of like a speaker grill, some black fabric across the front here so you won't be able to see all these components inside when the layout's finished. And now with the front side soundtrack installed, I'm going to rotate the whole layout around so we can get to work on the haunted hoedown inside Cadaver Caverns with its uh, special effects light and sound show. This is the area I'm talking about. Right now, it's just a black void, but soon this empty stage will be filled with creepy creeps with eerie eyes and spooks coming out for a swing and wake. It's gonna be a little tight to work here inside of this black box, but fortunately I made the boot hill removable so I can take this entire section off and that should make things a lot easier. I want to be able to work with the soundtrack as I build this, so the first job is to mount these Tang Band speakers in the caverns. I want to put one here and another one right over there, so I need to drill a hole down through the foam, first of all, for those speaker wires to go through. This polystyrene foam that the entire layout is made of is great stuff, but unfortunately it tends to act a lot like a resonator. And so what I want to do is um, isolate the speakers from it as much as I can. So I've got some foam rubber here and I put a square of uh, mounting tape on the back and then the speaker will mount on top of this isolated from the foam. This is a very close clearance here between the track and the speaker, but I did measure it and the trains will clear. I'll hold the speaker in place here with some black gaffer's tape. The other thing the foam rubber does is provides a little shock absorption against the inevitable bumps that a portable layout like this will take. And now I just need to add a few more pieces of carved rock work to hide this a little better, make it look like it's back in a cave. One back in here. This one goes right up here. One more right there. I'm mounting the right hand speaker proving a little bit more complicated mostly because I had to build up a little pedestal here for it to sit on top of. Once again, using some uh, 3M mounting adhesive. And another mounting square on the bottom 
the speaker. And then that will get hidden back in there with some more rock work as well. Now I can start installing the electronics down here in this uh, access area. This is a uh, Prycom Dream Player Pro, which is uh, an upgrade from the one on the front side of the layout. This one actually will not only uh, control uh, a myriad of soundtracks, but it will also control lighting. Plug and play, ready to go. So this is pretty cool. Once again, we have, a, we have an amp right here hooked up to it, and our speakers will get plugged into that. Uh, the whole system runs on a couple of 12-volt uh, DC transformers. And I just cut a hole through the foam here so I can drop those down below and plug them into the power strip. Now I'm just screwing it into place. You can use wood screws in the foam as long as you don't plan to uh, screw it and unscrew it several times. I want to make sure that all the components are where I can reach them um, in case I need to uh, change any, any settings or rearrange anything. The SD card right here where I can get it at it. So I think we're good. Also a good idea to put little nylon bushings under each one of these mounting holes. So, you know, airflow underneath. Important with electronics. I'll mount the amp right next door. Once again, making sure that I can get to all of the components, especially this volume knob right there, rather important. And then I like to secure any loose wires with some gaffer's tape. And this plugs into here. There's the audio from Dream Player Pro to the amp. Now I can attach the speakers these handy uh, screw down terminals and bring the uh, wires from the right hand speaker around. I'll hook those up. Make sure we got good connections. All right, let's test it out. Okay, that's good. I don't want to give too much of it away just yet. All right, we've got the two sound systems dialed in and working the way they should, so now it's time to start adding some animation to the scene. And what I have in mind here is something along the lines of the big ballroom scene at Disneyland's Haunted Mansion. Basically a large and elaborate Pepper's Ghost effect. Now this little item right here is a low-geared, slow-rotating turntable. Uh, I picked this up on Amazon. These are used to display products for product photography and things like that. Uh, I thought it would be fun, you know, to put models on there and display them. Uh, I've used it maybe one time. So now it's going to become part of Cadaver Caverns. Uh, it was white when I got it. I just painted it flat black. And what's going to happen is this is going to be right back here, right about here. And the top of the disc is going to be populated with ghostly figures. And as it rotates, those figures will be reflected in a pane of plexiglass set at an angle. Putting it at an angle means that it will reflect these characters, but not a viewer looking in through the caverns here. So the first thing to do is to build a little stand for this to go on, because it needs to be up about three inches above uh, this foam base right here. I went ahead and created some laser cut parts for my turntable stand. This is out of some uh, 1 16th of an inch thick MDF. Now I just need to put it together. OK. 
Okay. Now I just need to paint that flat black to match the turntable. I think the paint is dry enough on this now. So I can attach the turntable. Once again, I'm using some 3M industrial strength double-sided mounting tape. Getting a lot of mileage out of this stuff on this project. All right. So let's see, plugs on this side, switches on this side. Okay. And now we need a cast of characters. So I went into my collection of figures and uh, picked out some different people here. I like the ones that are more or less in a walking pose, so it gives the feeling of motion as they go around. I thought a horse would be funny. I thought a pig would be funnier. <laughs> These are from all different kinds of manufacturers. Uh, some are Woodland Scenics, some are, I think, Lifelike. Got some Knuckle Duster figures here. And what I'm going to do now is paint all of these guys a flat black, and then they'll get the, uh, the Haunted Mansion treatment with some uh, white and blue highlights to bring them out and make them look like ghosts when the light in the Pepper's Ghost effect shines on them. I'll show you what I mean by a Haunted Mansion style paint job on this uh, native fellow here. Now that he's painted flat black, I'm going to take some, uh, some granite gray, dry brush that so I just hit the highlights, mix a little bit of a Vallejo blue in there, mix it with that gray. Now take some pure Vallejo white, and go over everything again. Now what's going to happen is when the light from the Pepper's Ghost effect shines on him, you'll just see the highlighted parts mostly and the black will fade back in so he'll look even more transparent. And I'm fading it down towards his feet so it'll look, whoops, so it'll look um, more like he's floating rather than walking. Okay, now I just need to do that with all the rest of the characters. And there they are, the dear departed citizens of Gruesome Gulch. At least, some of them. Now I'm putting the turntable into place using some black gaffer's tape. It's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, which is uh, better to put the turntable in first and then put the figures on or put all the figures on and then put the turntable in. I've decided to put the turntable in first because that way I'll be less likely to knock them off while I'm moving it in and out of here. Now I can just rotate the turntable into position and glue each one of these guys in place with a little CA. And that's how it looks when they're all glued into place. So a quick refresher on how a Pepper's Ghost illusion works. Uh, it's basically a controlled viewpoint reflection illusion, not to put too fine a point on it. And what that means is that the viewer is seeing a reflection, but they don't necessarily know that they're seeing a reflection, thus the illusion. And there are a couple of things you can do so as not to give away the trick. The first thing you can do is pretty easy. Just angle the reflective surface, in this case a sheet of plexiglass, so that it only reflects the assets that you want it to reflect, in this case the ghost spinning around down here, and not the viewer looking in from this angle. They'd have to get way, way over here on the left-hand side in order to be able to see the reflection in that. The second part is a little trickier, hiding the lights. This is one of three LEDs that will illuminate the ghosts on the spinning disc. And I've got to position it in such a way that it shines on them, but can't be seen by the viewer. Let me show you a couple of uh, little tricks I've learned real quick with uh, LEDs. I've got a pair of 5 millimeter LEDs here that are wired up together to help illuminate my ghosts. One is green and one is blue, and I have marked them so I can keep track of which one is which. And let me show you, um, these are focused LEDs. They point 
in a specific direction. See the little circle of light? And uh, I usually buy these, this variety. You can get diffused ones too. You see how that's a very focused kind of beam of light. I, I get this kind because if I want it to shine on something, I want it to shine on something. And if I want to diffuse it, that's easy to do with an LED. I can just take an emery board or some fine sandpaper and rough up the surface. And that will create a little bit of diffusion on the LED. Now, after sanding that down, you can see that the light is much more diffused than it was before, which is what I want in this particular case. So I want the light from the LEDs to show, but I don't want the LEDs themselves to show. So I'm going to kind of borrow an old theater trick and adapt it to modeling. I'm going to take a piece of 3 uh, heat shrink tubing, and put it down over the bulb, and then I can trim it right about there. And we'll put a little black gaffer's tape or electrical tape around the edge here to hold that in place. And now I have a baffled light, just like you would see in a theater. Except I can't, you know, adjust the baffles like they can, but um, this is good enough for our scale models. There you go. You can see the light, but you can't see the LED itself from behind or the side. With the Dream Player Pro, the lights can actually be synced to the soundtrack. So what I'm doing now is positioning them uh, for the show to make sure they're all pointed in the optimal direction, but still hidden from view. Okay, we've got our sound effects installed, we've got our animation, and we've got our lights. Everything's working great, so now I need to build a set something for the ghosts to inhabit, so they're not just, you know, spinning around in a black void. So my set is basically a couple of layers of flats. So I painted the, the backmost layer just flat black, and then this layer is dark blue, and then I've got some trim that's going to go over each one of these structures, each one of these facades. And it's all going to be highlighted with some UV paint. This is clear UV paint in a couple of different colors. I think I'm just going to mostly use green because the whole town is going to be illuminated by ultraviolet light. Now I just need to glue all this together. It actually probably took longer to design than it is going to take to build. All right, well, I need this to be about five inches above the bottom of my black stage area there. So I've cut some stilts out of some uh, quarter inch stock. I'm going to glue those onto the back. For each piece of trim, I have to go over it like this with the uh, UV paint. You really got to put it on thick for it to show up, so I'm just dabbing it on. And then when it's under the UV light, <laughs> looks a little bit like ectoplasm all over everything. So I call this ectoplasmic weathering. Anything in the windows, because I want it to basically just be a black void behind those. But I am going over all of the lettering on the... Uh, facades with some um, UV paint. Make those uh, stand out. And that just takes uh, a very small brush and a lot of patience. <laughs> I also went back over a lot of the door and window frames to make them pop a little more. Now I think it's ready to put in the scene. Just glue that into place with a little bit of power grab adhesive. And let's see how it looks now under the UV. All right. I think we've got ourselves a dark ride. <laughs> well, I think we've got that about dialed in. Now I just need to uh, hide the magic trick a little better with some strategically placed rock work. So the goal here is to hide all of the edges of the plexiglass and to hide all of the lighting fixtures down here. 
without, of course, interfering with the show. Um, the plexiglass, by the way, is, is not glued in. It's just wedged down here between a couple of blocks of foam, so I can remove it if I need to. This is the only piece that's going to be physically connected to the plexiglass. It'll act as sort of a proscenium arch over the scene. And this piece can go right here. Now I'm working on disguising this bottom edge so that the entire scene will be framed in rock work. I've got a couple of problems to solve in this little area right here, which transitions from the Bridge of Skulls into the big, you know, Haunted Hoedown finale scene. Uh, I don't want to give it all away. I don't want it to be totally visible from this side, but, uh, you know, a little sneak peek is fine. Uh, the biggest problem is I need to hide the UV light down here, which is down in the corner. And then I need to block out the light from the headlight of the locomotive, or whatever is coming around this corner right here because that headlight is going to shine on the back of this plexiglass and destroy the Pepper's Ghost illusion. And that's no good. Uh, but it's a very tight space. There's not a lot of room for anything right there. Uh, the track comes right up to the edge. So I'm resorting to <laughs> one of the oldest dark ride tricks in the book. We're going to use a flat. This is just going to fit right down in here between these two scenes. I just uh, made this out of some uh, illustration board, painted it with some very rudimentary detail. And uh, in the dark, it should work great. It'll just look like uh, more rock formations. And to really help sell the illusion, I can add a little piece of 3D scenery to this end transition into the flat. To hide this very obvious speaker, I had to get a little creative, so I carved a custom bit of rock work with a cave opening in it, and I glued some black cotton cloth across the back, so you won't be able to see that when everything is properly lit inside the caverns. Now I just need to glue this into place. And I think that's it for the rock work I want to add. Uh, there is one little space back in here, this little corner where the train comes out from backstage. Um, there's one more little effect I want to put in there. <laughs> one more little set piece, but uh, I only got the parts for it today, so I really don't have time to do it in this video. That'll have to wait for a future installment of the Gruesome Gulch build, but there is one more little effect that's going to go back in that corner. So for now, I'm going to call the rock work carving and installation finished. Now I'm just going to go back and dry brush on some other colors and bring out the details just a little bit. All right, I think that's pretty good with the paint. Now before I put the lid back on this and we test everything out, I want to give you a kind of a behind the scenes overview uh, so you can see all the components and how they work together. Looking at the scene from up above here, the, the whole trick is pretty obvious. You can see the plexiglass there and little bits of rock to uh, hide it from view. Fortunately, the viewers will never see it from this angle. There you can see the UV light hidden down in the corner. Coming down below here, this will all be hidden behind an access panel. There we've got our turntable with our gruesome gulch citizens going round and round. And you can see some of the LED lights that uh, shine on them. And right here we have the electronic guts of the whole thing, the Pricom Dream Player Pro. I don't think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, these uh, Dream Players, they give you the option of either having a continuous loop or you can have it push button activated. Uh, the front ambient soundtrack, which is just the background, is, uh, is on a continuous loop, but this one has a uh, little push button to activate it for the show. And this will be mounted in the layout fascia when all is said and done. All right. Well, 
Well, without any further ado, let's watch the show. And there it is, your basic haunted hoedown, courtesy of some wonderful old school special effects that I borrowed from Disney, some cutting edge electronics from Prycom Design, and some fantastic sound design from Jim Wells over at Fantasonics Engineering. Jim, I cannot thank you enough. We will be working together again. I want to thank all of you for watching this video today. In fact, I want to thank you for watching the entire Gruesome Gulch series. If you've hung in there until now, I really appreciate it. And that brings me to a little announcement that I have to make. Uh, many of you may know that I was uh, getting the layout ready for a show out in California, out in Riverside. I found out about halfway through making this video that that show had been canceled. So with that, my deadline of the first week in May has evaporated. I no longer have a hard and fast deadline to get this finished. Uh, a lot of you may also know that I was planning to sell the layout at a certain point when it's done, but I've decided to keep it through October of this year. That's right, all the way through Halloween of 2023. And so that gives me a lot more time to work on the layout. The, uh, the Riverside show may be rescheduled at some time in the future. Right now, it's up in the air. Uh, I won't get into the reasons here why the show was canceled. That's, that's really none of my business. But I just wanted to let you all know that I won't be, you know, taking the layout out to California to show it in Riverside, at least not at that show. Uh, there may be other shows between now and the end of October. Who knows? But right now, uh, since I don't have a deadline, I'm going to tap the brakes a little bit on the frenetic pace I've been setting on the Gruesome Gulch layout and take a little bit more time uh, to finish up the last few projects. Uh, I've got some, uh, some rolling stock projects that I would like to finish, some motive power projects, a couple of Bachman porters that I want to uh, customize for the layout and a few other little things uh, I mentioned earlier. There's a, another effect for the caverns, one more that I would like to add. So, you know, over the next few months, I'll be slipping those in here and there. So this is not the end, my friends, of the Gruesome Gulf series. No, no, there will be more videos, but this is a break. Say this is the end of the season for now for Gruesome Gulch. We're going to wrap it up here with Cadaver Caverns and the Haunted Hoedown. And I'm going to take a little break from Gruesome Gulch for a couple of months and work on some of the other projects here in the studio, which have been waiting patiently on the back burner. The Bandit Canyon Railway in ON18. Uh, there's a lot to do over in Calico. There's a whole bunch more to do on the Thunder Mesa layout many structures and scenes and several locomotive projects that I have waiting there. Uh, so I hope you guys will all tune in for those and everything else that happens here on the channel. Until next time, 
You can follow us on Instagram at thunder.mesa and find out all that's new, including what shows are happening and what shows aren't, and when you can visit the studio and when you can't, over on the Thunder Mesa Studio website. That's thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and would like to show your support, you can do what these nice folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.